More trouble aboard the Carnival cruise ship called Triumph, a vessel that two months ago left thousands stranded at sea and living in squalor for days after an engine failure resulted in widespread power outages. And this afternoon, that same ship was blown away from its Alabama mooring by high winds while it carried 800 people aboard. ABC's Matt Gutman has the latest on the cruise ship with a course as wayward as its luck. For the second time in as many months, all aboard the Carnival Triumph were left adrift. This time, a storm walloped the ship with 70 mile per hour winds. 800 crew and contractors were on the Colossus as it was knocked from its moorings and began bouncing off other ships and boats in Mobile Bay, where it was undergoing months of repair. Due to the high winds, the Carnival Triumph broke its moorings drifted over across the Mobile ship channel. It had a small uh, collision with the Army Corps of Engineer boat and a, a deck barge. During that collision, it took uh, a few scrapes and scratches. And an eyewitness described the slow motion chaos as the ship drifted helplessly in the bay. The wind just came out of nowhere. I've seen a couple of let's go flying by and someone said, oh my God, look at the, the carnival. And we turned and look and you could see the carnival coming sideways. And there was a tugboat trying to keep it in the center of the river, but it just backed it completely into the bank and pinned the tugboat against the bank. The result, this giant gash on the back of the ship, some other dents. Tonight, at least four tugboats had to lasso the 900-foot Triumph and slowly ease it back into its dock. It has been a rough ride for Carnival the past two months. Adrift for five days in February in the Gulf of Mexico after an engine fire, the Triumph was finally towed to Mobile when the 4200 aboard came pouring off. The worst experience I've ever had. We thought we were going to die for a little while. In some cases, kissing terra firma for the first time in eight days. Yeah, you can talk to us. Come on over. I'm speechless. It's just really great um, to finally be back in America and on land. Some angry. The doctor on the staff can excuse my French. He can kiss my Others relieved. I'm just happy to be alive. Uh, it's quite an ordeal, but, but we're here. The Triumph went dead in the water on February 10th. The ship, 300 yards long, equipped with every amenity, and now the more than 4,000 aboard could only communicate in snippets of text messages. 36 hours into the crisis, no hot food, no hot water, no AC, and the ship was listing. When we were leaning one way, it was kind of a little nerve-wracking. Worst of all, backed up toilets. There was sewage everywhere. I got one flush one time. Five days, one flush. Five days, one flush. For toilets, the ship handed out these red bags. People were using the restroom in little red plastic bags and throwing them out into the hallway. We were in shock. We were like, I'm not using a red bag. But the thing is, is you just don't eat. You just don't eat. To not have to use the red you bag. You control in the colon. You just don't eat. <laughs> We um, met a couple that we were talking to that said um, her husband was laying in bed and just the ceiling fell down on him full of urine, feces, all of that. Yeah. The stench and heat driving people to camp out on the decks. They built 10 cities out of bed sheets. We've been shipwrecked for, I guess, three days now. ABC News was the first to fly out over the crippled cruise. You can tell how powerful the wind is, gusting at 25 miles an hour. Those conditions bringing out the worst in some people. They opened the bar one evening and gave away free drinks. And that was a really bad idea. There were people throwing things over the side of the ship, acting unruly. And during the voyage, passengers did receive updates on the PA system as well as printed status updates. But Rob Mallon thinks that was another poor decision. Maybe they were using the emergency generator to supply printers instead of toilets. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Folks hoarding food, forcing others onto a diet of onion sandwiches. What was the food situation like? You had to stand in line for three hours to, you know, to get a meal. And um, the first couple days it was uh, the onion sandwiches. But at least they were steadily, if slowly, being tugged back to the U.S. That's when Mike Padilla finally got through to his wife on the phone, anxiously waiting her return. They think the tug line might have just broken. Passengers say this should never have happened. This is the latest in a string of incidents involving cruise ships. Last year, the coast of Concordia capsized in Italy, killing 32 passengers.
And in 2010, another Carnival ship, the Splendor, was stranded for days after another engine fire. I know you can't talk to me, but is there anybody who can? But it took days before a Carnival executive finally appeared before the press. We pride ourselves in providing our guests with a great vacation experience, and clearly we failed in this particular case. But then the executives avoided follow-up questions. I'm sorry, Mr. Thornton, Matt Gutman from ABC News. Thank you for taking the time today. But I wonder Thank if you, you could take a few I'm more sorry, questions. Like, do you really? You're running away. We've been trying to track down anybody from Carnival yes, we're to gonna talk be to us. And the company's chief marketing officer he also retreated. We're on our way. Two minutes. But one thing that did go right in the end for Carnival was bringing that colossus of a ship up this narrow channel in darkness. Towed to that now infamous dock in Mobile, where after seven weeks, it went adrift yet again. I'm Matt Gutman for Nightline in Miami.